for some people, they'll be thinking we're on the wrong channel. Yes, you know when I think it plays, might be on right you? now, yeah, isn't Yeah, I think it might be. You're still with Good Morning Britain, it's good. And our next guest is a familiar face to many soap and drama fans, but now actor Mark Morahan is lending his dulcet tones to narrate the adventures of iconic children's character Thomas the Tank Engine. There's something really soothing about that music. There is, yeah, we've all grown up with it. And it's different now, though, isn't it? Is it the, there's yeah, two, there's four, there's six, there, there, yeah, that, it's changed. Yeah, it's a bit more funky, I think, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah. it's, still, it's still essentially the, the old song, so, yeah. and, as you say, we all remember it well. I remember it very fondly. We'll talk to Mark a little bit about that. Before we do, though, let's remind ourselves of some of his previous characters elsewhere. Probably no difference over there than there is here. No jobs. Mark got his first break in soaps playing Barry back in 1988 in Emmerdale. He then found himself returning to his real home of Liverpool playing builder Greg Chadwick when he moved with his family into number six Brookside Close. His next appearance in Soapland was as Holby City's heartthrob Owen Davis, who led a tangled love life spanning three marriages. More recently, Mark headed to the cobbles where he played Eileen Grimshaw's love interest, Adrian. But that wasn't to be when she spurned him for another online match. After Emmerdale, Brookside, Holby and Corrie, where will Mark end up next? Could Albert Square be beckoning? And Mark's here now. It's only the enders. You've got to tick the box on, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. I've actually been in the Queen Vic on um, oh. what me the children in need, so I've, I've kind of been around them all. You've kind yeah. of experienced it. Yeah. yeah. That was some time ago, the Emmerdale. You were just saying to us that it was Emmerdale Farm when you it were in it. It was Emmerdale Farm, yeah. Gosh. And I had my own hair and teeth. Then, <laughs> yeah. It's frightening to see. That's the first time I've seen that clip in all those years. So. Goodness and me. And you've been very clever, because you've kind of left it open to go back to... Pretty much all of those characters, if you want well, to. Well, I've been lucky, yeah. None of them have ever killed me, but then again, none of them have ever asked me back, so, <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? But no, I mean, Corrie was just, I mean, that was a dream for me to get Corrie, because. Uh, been a fan for you. Yeah, since I was a kid. So, as I say, walking out on the, on the cobbles for the first time was like, wow. And seeing all the faces that you've, you've seen yeah. for years. And so to be a part of that was, was magic. And um, who knows? See, see if they bring me back one day. I mean, you're obviously an actor, so you're doing a performance. But is it strange acting opposite a character that's incredibly familiar? Do you kind of want to stop and go? Oh, hello. Yeah, completely. Yeah. No, completely. <laughs> and like sitting in the Rovers, and you know, you've got Craig Charles there, and you've got you've got Sue Nichols over there, and you and you and you're like, that's Ken Barlow. You know, you just like telly. It's just weird. I love yeah, that. It's weird. But but because I tended to try not not to um, read. The other character's script because I, I want to watch the show. <laughs> so I just look, look at my bits and, and leave there so I can you actually watch it. didn't want to ruin the it. No, exactly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Thomas Tank Engine, though, because you, uh, you, you have a hugely important role. Yeah. Uh, perhaps the pinnacle of your career in terms of, of, of prestige. I would well, absolutely, say. yeah. Well, it's such an iconic character. And again, we've all grown up with him. So to, to be asked to, to be the storyteller for Thomas was. Uh, I have to. I still kick myself now. I absolutely love the job, you know. This is, so this is, this is the new film. That's, uh, that's out in the cinema. Yes, because it's, it's a relatively recent thing, isn't it, in the Thomas the Tank Engine history, that it's become a silver screen success. People love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, this is my, I think, third film. Yeah. And it's, the, it's by far the most epic yet, and we've yeah. got John Hurt, Eddie Redmayne, Olivia Coleman. Oscar you know, Eddie exactly. Redmayne. Yeah, fantastic. He plays Ryan. And, um, Who's Ryan? Ryan? Ryan's a new engine. Oh. And, uh, Thomas... Is it a new engine to the t series, or yes. is it in the books? Uh, it may have been in the books. Oh. Oh. He's certainly new to the screen, I think. Right. Um, and Eddie Redmayne kind of pushes Thomas's nose out of joint and he goes off in a huff and ends up underground where he discovers this pirate ship and, and John Heard plays Sailor John, who's, who's a bit of a nasty piece of work. Stunning cast. Let's have Stella a look car. at some of the action. <laughs> the ground of the recently dug cutting was weak and unstable. Engineers were called and declared it unsafe. They put up signs to warn everyone of the danger and made plans to reroute the track. <laughs> wow. Is it Thomas the Tank Engine law that it has to be narrated by a scouser? Well, it seems to be, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, Ringo Starr started the, the, first the whole, one, yeah, it? and then Michael Angelis yeah. did it for a long time. 
So, yeah, I suppose they've, they've kept it that way. I don't know why, but it seems to work. So it was the role you were born to play? Obviously. <laughs> it was there in your genetics, you can't get Definitely, away from it. Yeah, yeah. No, but I absolutely adore the show, and it's just uh, wonderful. And it's a legacy for my kids and my grandkids. Yeah, because you've got two thing. little ones, not two big ones, or two little ones. I have, yeah, and I've got uh, three grandkids three as well. Grandkids. And my two wow. grandsons especially are, are big fans of it, so, oh, so granddad's a bit of a, you know... A hero! Oh, well, we've got that far, but, Was it yeah. quite nice when those two grandsons came along? Because up until then you'd had four girls, hadn't yeah, you? Yeah, well, and... And I'm trying to get my kids into football. I'm a big Liverpool right. fan, so so my two grandsons are a mad Liverpool fan. So I've kind of it's it's I've got the best of both worlds, really. Perfect Brilliant. stuff, Mark. It's lovely to see. Thanks so much. Best of luck with the uh, with the film as well. Thank you. And we'll keep our eyes out on EastEnders as well. Ooh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Can you imagine four women surrounded by four women? Terrifying. I, that's my my life living well, we it here in the studio. We had to send one of them away to Portsmouth this morning. To get Laura's some respite. there with the weather.